So this is the second part of the series where I answer a series of questions about how I price my, my projects as well as get customers. A lot of that material I did cover in the first video and I've replied to a lot of comments I've gotten. It was really, a lot of you will say that this has become sort of your Saturday morning routine and it's also become mine going on there and replying to comments. And it's always nice to hear from other woodworkers how they do things because I don't have it all figured out and it's just nice to hear that people do things similarly. So um, this second part is mostly, I believe, questions I'm answering from the, the uh, replies to that first video. I'm going to try and get most of them in here. I've already edited the video, so it's only going to be as long as it is right now. So if I don't get your, your question in there, I do apologize ahead of time. Um, and then I have a ton of stuff going on in the shop. So next week it will be back to the how to's and the build videos. But just in general, an all encompassing thing with YouTube is if someone leaves a comment, I do try and reply to it. I'm sure there will be a point if this upward trajectory of the channel continues that um, I will not be able to go on there and reply to everyone. I just won't have enough time. But for the time being, it's not overwhelming for me to do. And I do enjoy talking to other people on there about woodworking and, and what's going on in my shop. But if I reply to a comment and then you reply as well. YouTube will send me a notification. I usually get it on my phone and that's it. So if I go to the comment section, usually in my laptop, it does not update that someone has replied to a reply. So those are the comments I miss the most just because I don't notice them. So I just kind of wanted to throw that out there that if there was um, comments that I replied to and then you replied to as well, I'm not intentionally not replying. It's just if I don't get the notification, I don't even uh, notice it's there. So I already answered some of the questions um, on the last video in the comments. The ones I didn't get to, I wrote out on, on a list that I have sitting next to me. Um, this video is already edited, so if it doesn't fit in there, I'll try it and go back and on the old video and answer it. Um, one of the questions I get the most in the videos is how I got into woodworking and specifically if I have a background in art. And I actually do have a background in art. Um, my degree from college is a, to be specific is a I'm, trying, I'm actually trying to remember what it says is a bachelor of the fine arts and the discipline I focused on because you have to focus in a discipline with sculpture so I can't draw or anything like that that's a common misnomer when someone tells you they have an art degree but um, I've worked three-dimensionally in school now that doesn't necessarily segue into woodworking at all in fact it really doesn't it's it's two very different disciplines I think the bonus I had for getting started in woodworking is I think a lot of getting started in woodworking is the, the initial hurdle of just getting used to and getting competent using the tools. And when you're working three-dimensionally, you the school that I went to had a full working wood shop compared to even shops I've seen on YouTube. It was gigantic and, and full of lots of tools. And there was a metal sh a metal shop side as well, so I learned how to weld, learned how to use um, woodworking tools and all of that. Since it was a school, you actually had to sit through shop orientation for each class that used, utilized the wood shop. So even if you had sat through it before, you had to sit through it again. So the amount of wood shop orientations I've sat through is, is just endless. So by the time I decided to segue into woodworking, I had already, like I said, been using power tools and making stuff with my hands for years. I mean, I've been making stuff with my hands since I was a kid. I've always been interested in in, in um, working with, with materials and, and building three-dimensionally. My first chisels and mallet came from my grandfather who was actually a union woodworker. He gave them to me when I was in elementary school and I still have them. But um, why woodworking kind of that kind of segues into why woodworking is uh, my grandfather was a union carpenter and he was pretty close to retirement by the time i was i was born i'm trying to remember honestly i feel like it's it's 
when you're younger, it's a little hazy of what, what your grandfather's doing. But I knew he was a carpenter, and I knew that just because um, he built the house that he lived in, and he had built other houses. And he was always making us stuff when we were kids. He would make all of his grandchildren rocking chairs and, and doll houses and, and stuff like that. And I always just thought it was so cool. And I always thought it was cool how people, people spoke about him, how talented he was. And, and um, he used his imagination a lot to create things, didn't work off of pictures or anything like that. And um, being a union carpenter, when you go and visit him, you drive around, he was always t talking about, I worked on that house or I worked on that business, I built that. And I just, I always was fascinated with it and thought it was awesome. And I've always enjoyed working with my hands. Um, there's many professions where you do work with your hands. And whenever you meet someone, even if it's not in woodworking, let's say it's in stonework, or if it's in art or anything like that, you always just have somewhat of a common bond. It's a, it's a common mentality. And um, I think people kind of get each other when they, when they do find that out. So that's kind of a rough outline of my background. When I got out of school, I worked for one of my professors for um, about a year, uh, maybe maybe a little less, and then I moved to Jersey for a year. And during that time, I was doing handyman sort of work, fixing things, um, a lot of a lot of construction-based projects. And then, like I said in my my woodshop intro, someone asked me to make them a piece of furniture, and I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the creative aspect of it versus some sort of um, disciplines in construction are, are not as creative so um, the shop I work in is is actually my parents garage and I approached they kind of used most of the bottom with storage as well as the top because there's a second floor and I'll, I'll never forget it was during the spring I've been living in Jersey and I asked them if I could use it to start a woodworking business and they were very gracious and allowed me to and that was a huge a huge plus for me because I wasn't making really good money off of it. I still don't make really, really good money, but I wasn't making enough money to, to pay for rent or anything like that for a couple of years. It takes a while to build up your name. So the fact that they were willing to give up that space for, for a shop was, was very generous. That's also the reason why I always mention how I had no intentions of staying here as long as I've had. Um, I'm sure they would love to get their garage back as well as I would love to move into a bigger space. Like I said, logistically speaking, I haven't worked out that plan in my head yet, but um, I'm at a point where I have enough money saved up that I could think about about moving on from this space. But I will miss it. It it was it has been super great. And if you're starting a business, overhead can be absolutely crazy. I used to own a store, so I know how quickly all of your your months savings can go can go to rent and stuff like that so that was a huge help in in in, in getting the business started um someone asked if i would like a larger shop um of course everybody i think would love a larger shop not too big but a little bit of a bigger space especially for storage i have so much storage around me it just gets in the way i'm knocking into it all day long if i was staying uh, in this space, I would definitely prefer creature comforts over space, um, not having heat, uh, sufficient heat. I do have a heat source that, that keeps stuff from freezing, but it's just not warm in the cold months. It makes building not as enjoyable. It's the uh, humidity issues with the dryness of the winter come into play paint drying times come into play life is just a lot harder in the winter so if i had the choice over a shop this size um with what it has in it versus a shop that's uh, a shop this size with creature comforts versus a larger shop that has no creature comforts i would choose the creature comforts even stuff like um, my ceilings aren't eight feet tall is a huge pain the fact that my the floor slope because it's an old carriage house stuff like that really just it adds so much time onto the process because you're constantly trying to level out a space in order to be able to even start building um someone asked what my favorite tool is and why and i would say a bandsaw and i do not own one i used to own a bandsaw but it broke and it was an older model that wasn't really worth replacing. 
I don't own a bandsaw, not necessarily because of monetary reasons, but just because it, it won't fit my shop. And the one I would want, I actually think it literally won't fit my shop. It's too tall. So that is why I don't have one. Um, I just like the versatility of them. And coming from a sculptural background, you can really kind of push the limits of a bandsaw and do some pretty cool, pretty cool three-dimensional sculptural work on them. Um, someone else also asked about buying tools and the cost of that. When I first started the business, I went out and bought that table saw. It's a grizzly table saw. Um, I didn't, I don't really do brands. I don't have any brand loyalties. I got the grizzly because for the price, it was one of the better rated tools and I'd used grizzly tools before and I, I didn't mind them. Other than that, I had some tools like a router, a jigsaw, most most kind of smaller hand tools drills and a circular saw from things I bought while I was in school so that I could work on the weekends when the shop was closed um, other than that a lot of the tools I've acquired have come from people whose uh, fathers or grandfathers have passed away and they don't want to just throw out their tools and they prefer to see someone take them who's going to put them to good use so as sad as it is when someone passes away, I do really like the fact that my collection of tools came from, came from woodworkers and that being a woodworker probably appreciate the fact that someone is still using them. So my raid alarm saw came from a contractor I know in town who I make uh, doors for, custom sized doors for, and his father passed away and he had two radial alarm saws and two drill presses. So he gave me the radial alarm saw and the drill press and I severely appreciated it and he was happy to to have someone take them so a lot of a lot of tools I've gotten that way um, and other than that a lot of yard sale finds so not a lot of of new bought tools so the initial expense wasn't terrible it was mainly just the table saw and the hand tools I've already had I was able to get by with that for for quite a while someone asked if I have a business partner and if I have employees or would want employees I used to have a business partner we went our separate ways a couple years ago and just for paperwork purposes and um, if you have a business partner you really have to trust them it's it's practically like being married you you share 50% of everything and if they turn out to be a jerk you can you can really get screwed over over in a business um, that person didn't do that but I would be hard-pressed to to get a business partner again um, as same thing with employees I know people that have employees and say it's just a pain the paperwork is a pain having them as a pain finding good work is a pain so um, I haven't really thought of that. I also did not have as much work as I have now until about a year or two ago. Now I'm pretty backed up now, so the thought of an, of an employee wasn't even really ever on my radar. And um, an employee wouldn't really fit in my shop. <laughs> so yeah, I haven't put too much thought into that. I also really, um, I'm an extremely shy person, which is what makes doing YouTube and replying to emails and comments much easier for me because it's not an in-person interaction so I have always enjoyed working by myself and um, the thought of someone else in the shop I've had interns which worked out nicely but they were always temporary they weren't there for a long time so I do enjoy working with myself it, I'd be hard-pressed to agree to have someone permanently permanently around me all the, all the time and then that's pretty much the extent of the footage I got and in, in the home um, Stuff like this I like to get in and get out and filming could be a pain. So I filmed installing the base and then that was pretty much it. And just because I spoke about it in the video, I added a very poorly taken photo, but a photo nonetheless of the dollhouse I was talking about that my grandfather made. You could kind of tell by the photo how big it is, but this is about three feet tall and it opens up in the back as well.